My name is Julie Meredith, and I'm the SR520 Program Director for the Washington State Department of Transportation. I'm also joined here today by Mike Cotton, WashDOT's Floating Bridge Director, and Jeff Carpenter, uh, the Washington State Department of Transportation Construction Engineer. The 520 Floating Bridge is a vulnerable structure, and we're working uh, to replace it to provide a reliable transportation corridor. We're providing a quality and safe floating bridge that will serve the region for the next 75 years or better. Today we want to share the latest news about what the 520 pontoon construction is undergoing and it is one of the most important elements of the 520 program. We've received questions from the media and public about the pontoon repairs that we've completed this summer and the progress made to date. As you may recall, we experienced spalling and cracking in May of this year and since that time, we've completed repairs on the project. We've convened an expert review panel to make suggestions for improvements in the future cycles of the pontoons, and they submitted their report to the Washington State DOT last month. After reviewing the panel's recommendations, we wanted to provide an update on what we're incorporating into Cycle 2. Now I'd like to have Mike speak about some of the repairs we've done for Cycle 1. Thank you, Julie. I do want to confirm that WashDOT would not have floated the, the pontoons onto Lake Washington if we weren't completely confident that they were structurally sound and safe to drive on for at least the next 75 years. We met uh, and shared information back in May when we learned about the spalling uh, that occurred after we began post-tensioning the first longitudinal pontoon. Um, a repair plan was developed by WashDOT and working with our design builder um, that repair uh, procedure was implemented on that, that pontoon and as part of that repair procedure we removed the spalled concrete in those areas, we added some reinforcing steel and then we cast the concrete uh, back at those locations. Uh, the pontoon expert review panel concurred with WashDOT that these repairs made to those areas uh, in the areas that we refer to as the bolt beam and the post tension ducts were sufficient for structural capacity and in fact with the rebar that was added uh, even stronger in those areas. So we have a lot of pontoons that will make up the new bridge. Uh, we continue to inspect the pontoons from the time that they're in the casting facility to the time they go through float out all the way through construction until they're open to traffic and uh, if there are any uh, need to make modifications to repairs on those pontoons we'll be working with our design builder to do that. And with that I will turn it over to Jeff Carpenter. Thanks, Mike. So we've taken the panel's findings and made changes for Cycle 2. We're confident the design and construction work follow the recommendations, spalling can be avoided, and cracking will be reduced in the future pontoon cycles. To eliminate spalling, we've moved the post-tension heads closer to the wall perimeter, and we're changing the material used in the bolt beam, and adding reinforcing steel in the vicinity of the bolt beam. To reduce cracking, we're adding additional reinforcing bars to the end walls and decoupling the end walls from the interior precast walls until the post tensioning is complete. To guarantee high quality throughout the pontoons, we're ensuring rigorous construction oversight, adding quality verification staff so we have more eyes in the field, confirming that all concrete testing is taking place as required, and monitoring all construction processes. I want to be clear. The Washington State Department of Transportation is proud of the work done to date on the program. These are the largest pontoons the agency has ever built that will form what will become the world's largest floating bridge in the world. And we are confident that we will be able to deliver a 75-year design life for the region and the state. 